Uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Time to discuss the internal rate of return as well as uh, net present value and also go over the derivation of it. Basically, internal rate of return or IRR, this is also called economic rate of return, ERR, discounted cash flow rate of return, DCFROR or the effective interest rate, EIR, etc. Basically, it's a rate of return of an investment and it's used in capital budgeting or any project that you're trying to uh, finance or, or to see whether it's profitable or not. And it's basically used to measure and compare the profitability, profitability of investments. And uh, rate of return is just basically profit of an investment over a period of time, usually expressed as a proportion of the original investment. It is, and it's called internal because its calculation does not include environmental factors such as inflation or interest rate. So this is purely on the cash flows of, yeah, that you are given per year. And it is calculated by basically setting the net present value, I'll go over that in a bit, to zero and solving for the discount rate or the interest rate on the investment. And put basically is just the interest rate on a loan or investment where the cash flows break even. So if you were to get a loan, you're gonna have to obviously pay interest on it. So if you're doing an investment and, it, and getting cash flows on that, basically you would yeah, be finding out uh, the interest rate that you would break even with all your cash flows. And basically the higher the IRR, the more desirable the investment is. Yeah, because basically this means that that you are breaking even at a really high interest rate, so you could uh, you could uh, afford to afford to take a loan even if it's a really high interest rate. So now the net present value. This is basically the sum of the present values of all incoming and outgoing cash flows over a period of time. And uh, what this basically means, first we look at what present value is. The value of any future cash flows determined at the date of valuation. For uh, basically, uh, and this is usually less than future value because money has interest earning potential. Except during rare times of negative interest rates, which is actually going on in Europe right now. Uh, basically, the the idea of this, this is all called the, uh, this is referred to as a time value of money because basically a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. So if you had a hundred dollars ten years ago, that's worth more than it is now. Yeah, and one reason is inflation and also the fact that if you had a hundred dollars, if you put it in a bank, you would have been collecting interest on it. So now the IRR calculation, and I'll derive this in the example further on, is just basically the sum right here where n equals zero up to capital N of CN over one plus R or the power of N and then setting this equal to zero where basically N is a time period and is a positive integer for example it's year one year two and N is the total number of time periods for example 30 years and R is the well um, the internal rate of return so this is the interest rate right here and CN is just a cash flow at time period N. For example, let's say you make $20,000 in year three, etc. So in setting this equal to zero, you just basically have to solve for R. And now a simple summary of all these definitions, they could seem overly technical and complex or just, just too much wording. So the simplified definition, IRR can simply be considered as the average interest rate on investment that have all cash flows break even, like I explained earlier. And basically the higher the IRR, the better, because it means that investment can be profitable even at very high interest rates. And now I'll go over a pretty useful example and also de derive the formula for the net present value and uh, setting it equal to zero. So basically, if you, let's say you put $70,000 down for an investment and have the following cash flows from the investment. Year one, you get 12,000, year two, 15, and year three, 18, and year four, 21, and then year five, 26. So basically from this given info, what is the internal rate of return? Also derive, uh, yeah, derive and explain the formula for net present value. Yeah, so now to uh, get the, to the solution, to basically to understand the IRR, we first look at what the present values are, are for each cash flow in each year. So the year zero, this is the initial start, 
and this is basically our low or uh, down payment right here so basically we lost seventy thousand in our investment that's because we're putting it in an investment so this is the initial start of the year in which we have to lower or discount all cash flows too so this is the year where we have to bring all of these fifteen thousand eighteen thousand all these back to year uh, zero right here so you have to bring it all the way back to year zero to see what they're worth then and then add them all up. This is also when we get our loan, thus we have, at this point we'll call this C0. And this C, that's for a cash flow, if you go back to the formula, there's CN. So this would be our C0, this would equal to, well, negative $70,000 right here. So now that we have our CO, let's look at the year one. So now, at the end of the first year, we have a cash flow of, well, $12,000. Since this is at the end of the year, we have to find out how much $12,000 is worth at the very start of the investment, or the year zero. This is because, as stated, as stated earlier, the time value of money and its ability to increase in value due to interest you could have been gaining, or due to, uh, basically, inflation. Yeah, so basically, the value of that dollar was more back then with inflation. So thus we assume that the present value of the cash flow increases year by year by the internal rate of return IRR. So this is the interest rate that we're just gonna, it's like an average one where we're saying that's how much it's, it's gonna be increasing by. So what this means is that our cash flow of 12, so if we were to write let's say present value, so let's say we had PV yeah, PV, we'll call this PV1 and also going back to this, this is CO, this is also the same as our present value zero of uh, the present value of 70,000 is 70,000 because that's just that's what we're uh, valuing everything at so our PV1 if we had this present value then let's say we add it by the interest rate so we add PV1 times it by well our R this is now equal to twelve thousand dollars so that's basically the whole idea. We're increasing this value by R because due to interest, inflation, etc., to twelve thousand dollars. So then this is divide this out. This is one plus R, and then this yes yeah, so equals twelve thousand. We just factored the PV one out. So basically PV one equals to twelve thousand divided by one plus R. And this is our present value for uh, this cash flow. This one we'll call the C1. Now when we look at year two, as with year one, we need to go backwards in time and figure out what the present value or the worth of our, uh, based at the start of our investment is for this new $15,000 cash flow. Thus, but this time we need to go back, well, two years because we're at end of year two, so we gotta go back to year one and then back to year zero at the very start. And after year two, we know the cash flow is 15,000, thus the present value is derived as shown below. Well, let's call this PV of our cash flow two. And then this is at year zero, so we'll call this year zero or at the start. But then we also have a year one here. I'll, put, I'll call this X. And then we have a year two. That is our $15,000. And this one we'll call this, well, value at, yeah, basically this is value at year one of the 15,000. So we know from this one here, we went back one year and we made it like that. So basically solving for x, we know x times it by one plus r or x plus x times r like this. This equals to, well, $15,000. So our x, because we're just going back one year, is equal to 15,000 divided by uh, 1 plus r. But now we're going back another year, so this is going to that, is this. And now we've got to go back one more year, so we have our pv2 is one, uh, of 1 plus r equals 2. I'll just, you know, just move this down here. So basically... This equals to now, well, this is now our x right here. So this equals to x, which equals to 15,000 divided by 1 plus r. So now that is the second 1 plus r. So our present value of our second cash flow is 15,000 divided by 1 plus r squared. And now there's a uh, pattern to this. So basically, uh, as you can see, for three, uh, for years three and four, every time we get another year, we add this, uh, this 
value right here, which is the year. So for year three, we are present value of three is equal to, well, we, it was 18,000, and then we have to divide by one plus R cubed. And then for the PV4, this equals two, this was 21,000 divided by one plus R4. And similar to the last one, PV5, this was $26,000 divided by one plus R4. I mean, a five right here. So these are the present values. And as you can see, these are dividing by a number, uh, assuming this is positive, it's going to be well dividing by a number greater than one, so this would be less than our uh, actual cash flows there, which it should be. Yeah, and thus putting this all together, we get our net present value, which is just a summation of all of them. So NPV equals two, well, negative seventy thousand. That's our loan plus now the first year, which was scroll back up. That's twelve thousand. So plus twelve thousand divided by one plus r, and then plus, now this is our 18,000, one, actually, whoops, not 18,000, forgot the 15, this is 15,000, that's right here, that's our second present value, one plus r squared, and then plus this one right here, one, now it's 18, 18,000 divided by one plus r cubed, and then plus 21, and then this is gonna be one plus R4, and then the last one, 25. 1,000, one plus R, power of five. Yeah, that was going too far to the page, so I just copied it, or uh, moved it over to here. So as you can see from these, can you, if you can see the pattern, these are exactly how that formula is. If I put a one here, and if I do this, and put a, well, one plus R, put a zero there is basically our formula and then and then this is if you look at it in generally then this equals to NPV is equal to this is going to be well summation of of n equals to zero which is this is our n so it starts off at zero and then CN this is our C zero this is our C one etc and then this is going to be 1 plus r, and then this is n, and all the way up to n. In this case, we have n equals to 5. And this is, well, n uh, equals to 0. Yeah, and this is n equals 1, n equals 2, etc. So this is basically the derivation and proof for our net present value formula. And now all we have to do is basically set this equal to 0. If we set this equal to zero, we get now our R is equal to our internal rate of return. So if we set all of these to R, and I mean, uh, yeah, basically set this whole thing to zero, equals to zero, and then we solve this, and that will be our internal rate of return. And to do that, well, then you could do it, this is hard to solve it for it. Uh, like this because it's a pretty complex equation. So there's a uh, calculation that you could do to do it, a lot of numerical ones. I'll, I like using Excel. Yeah, so right here, here's an Excel sheet embedded into this uh, document basically. Uh, the best way that I, I like using to calculate is basically I, I fill this table out and put this, this bracket, that's just a negative uh, right here and I get the calculation for net present value here. And then I would just uh, change the IRR manually until this net present value is zero. And this one, so I would change this yeah, manually. Put that here. And then these are just the formulas that we already derived. So if I go edit, yeah, so this is editing it right now. Yeah, so here, if you were to edit, change this out, so let's say 8.8, .8, etc then there's going to be a negative number right there, etc. Yeah, so this one is saying the net present value is negative. We don't want that. So this interest rate is too high. If I go to 6, basically now our present, we, this is, uh, yeah, this is making more money. So that's why it's positive. So basically the higher the interest rate, it's uh, usually better for investment. This means you could loan out even if their banks are charging you a lot. You could still make break even. 
So this is a good way of uh, basically seeing if your investment is worth it or not or comparing different projects. And if I close this, I'll just save that. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. Hopefully you learned about IRR and NPV. And uh, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And also I put that link to the Excel sheet also in the link below so you can play around with that. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for another Math Easy Solution.